Good morning. Wonderful to have each of you with us today as we worship our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As always, everything you need to know will be projected for you behind us here on the wall. We, we have some hymns to sing. We've got the conclusion of our Epic Fails teaching series that we've been doing for this month of February. We also have a children's message for our kids today. And I think that's about it. So I pray that God bless each of you as you worship him this day. I invite you to stand as we begin our time together singing our opening hymn, Alleluia, Sing to Jesus. kept a record of sins, but with you there is forgiveness. My friends, then let us confess our sins to God, our Heavenly Father, and invite you to join me now as we silently go before our Lord, reflecting upon our past week, bringing those sins we know and those sins we don't know to him. And now together we cry out to our Lord. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, 
confess to you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your punishment now and forever. But I am truly sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Friends, Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. So in this stead, and by the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, I, as a called and ordained servant of the word, forgive you of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We join together for our Kyrie. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We pray our prayer of the day. O oh God, in the glorious transfiguration your beloved Son, you confirm the mysteries of the faith by the testimony of Moses and Elijah. In the voice that came from the bright cloud, you wonderfully foreshow our adoption by grace. Mercifully make us co-heirs with the King in His glory, and bring us to the fullness of our inheritance in heaven. Through the same Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for our scripture readings. The first reading for today is taken from Job 1 and 2, starting at the first verse. There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job, and that man was blameless and upright, one who feared God and turned away from evil. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came among them. The Lord said to Satan, From where have you come? Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro on the earth and from walking up and down on it. And the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job, that there is none like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man, who fears God and turns away from evil? Now when Job's three friends heard of all this evil that had come upon him, they came each from his own place, Eliphaz the Timonite, Bildad the Shuite, and Zophar the Namathite. They made an appointment together to come to show him sympathy and comfort him. And when they saw him from a distance, they did not recognize him. And they raised their voices and wept, and they tore their robes and sprinkled dust on their heads toward heaven. And they sat with him on the ground seven days and seven nights, and no one spoke a word for him, for they saw that his suffering was very great. This is the word of the Lord. The second reading is from Job 42, starting at the first verse. Then Job answered the Lord and said, I know that you can do all things, and that no purpose of yours can be thwarted. Who is this that hides counsel without knowledge? Therefore, I have uttered what I did not understand, things too wonderful for me, which I did not know. Hear, and I will speak. I will question you, and you make it known to me. I had heard of you by the hearing of the ear, but now my eye sees you. Therefore, I despise myself and repent in dust and ashes. And the Lord restored the fortunes of Job when he had prayed for his friends. And the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. This is the word of the Lord. I'd like to invite our children up front for our children's message. Excuse me. Good morning, friends. Good to see you. Thanks for coming out. I think most of you have seen one of these before. What is this? Does anyone know? It checks your heartbeat. Yep. Does it do anything else? Kind of, not really. <laughs> What's that? It keeps us healthy, right? Who uses one of these? 
doctors, right? Doctors, this is called a stethoscope, right? And a stethoscope lets a doctor hear what's going on inside your body. So yes, like a heartbeat, but have, have they ever put it on, on your back before so they could hear you, hear you breathe? Sometimes it's cold, right? <gasps> Make, anyway, yeah. Okay, so when you were sick last time and, and you had to see a doctor, did you go to the doctor, the doctor's office, or did the doctor come to your house? You went to the doctor, went to the doctor, went to the doctor, yep. Anybody else? Anyone have a doctor come to their house? No. Okay. Well, this may be news to you, but a long, 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 long time ago. Did I go back far enough? Right. <laughs> Doctors would sometimes do things called house calls where they would actually have a, maybe a little black bag and they'd have their stethoscope in there and they would go to the people's house and they would check up on them. And maybe they had some medicine in their bag too, but they came to the people, came to their house. This is a beautiful picture of what Jesus did for people on earth, people who had problems people who were sick, and, and no one wanted to go around them because they were afraid that, that, that they might get sick. Or Jesus came for, for men who were tax collectors. Do you remember what a tax collector was? Heidi? Heidi? Yep, a Jew who collect, collected ta taxes for the Romans. Sometimes those tax collectors would take more than they were supposed to. So say you owed me a dollar, and I said, no, really, you owe me too. Those people probably didn't have a lot of friends, right? Well, Jesus came for people like that too. And, and there were lots of people who were upset with Jesus because he was hanging around all of these people that were sinners. And, and Jesus said, you know what? I didn't come for the healthy I came for those who are sick, those who know that they are sinners. You know, sometimes whenever, uh, whenever you're sick, you need to see a doctor, right? Not all the times, but sometimes. But anyone who has even the tiniest bit of sin needs Jesus. Sin is terrible, right? Sin is what separates us from God. Sin is what, what kind of breaks our relationships around us with our family and our friends. Sometimes why we get into fights, right? But Jesus came to earth. He made the ultimate house call, and he came to us. Now, a doctor will, will heal using things like medicine, right? Or, and, and sometimes he has some exercises or, or tools that, that help us. How does Jesus heal us? us yep. he preached about god's word yep and he died on the cross right he took all of that sin all of that stuff that breaks our relationship with god and he took it to the cross and he died and then he rose again and he gave us new life now all of us need jesus right every single one of us because we're all sinners you're going to hear a pastor talk about a man by the name of job and even the Bible says he was a pretty good guy. But even he needed the forgiveness of Jesus too, right? So because of God's love, he loves us, we can share that love with other people. Now we sometimes leave, it with you, leave you with a challenge, right? So here's my challenge for you this week. Maybe we can love other people who are maybe in our neighborhoods or, or maybe at school, and they just don't seem like they have a lot of friends, and we can be a friend to them and show them love, right? We can be kind to them. We can talk with them, maybe sit with them at lunch, do things like that. Sound good? All right, sounds great. Well, let's go ahead and close with a prayer and thank God, thank Jesus for coming to us, making the ultimate house call. Uh, congregation, we're going to pray, and we ask you to join us in this prayer. Thank you, Jesus, for coming to earth, for coming to me, and forgiving my sin. Help me to go and share your love with everyone I see. Amen. Thanks a lot for coming up, friends. We'll see you next time. The kids head back, invite you to stand as we join together to sing.
A few of the verses from hymn number 609, Jesus Sinners Doth Receive. of you from God our Father, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Would you please be seated. Earthquakes, bombings, shootings, cancer, COVID, sickness, death, Grief, pain, hurt, separation. Not a day passes where suffering is not part of our lives, our nation, and our world. People suffer. Children suffer. So much so, the question is often asked, what have we done to deserve this? How bad have I failed you, God, that this should come upon me? I go to church. I read my Bible. I try not to swear or curse too much. I try to keep my eyes from sinning, my lips from gossiping, and my time on social media at work to not be too much to where I actually don't think I'm stealing. Why, God? What have I done? What have we done to deserve this? Today, as we wrap up this teaching series, Epic Fails, we finish with another J. We've had Jacob and Jonah, and yes, today we finish with Job, who might echo those thoughts. Job, who scripture says was a blameless and upright man, who feared God and turned away from evil. But friends, all that simply means 
is he is a person who, who walked closely with God and delighted in obeying God's law. That also meant that he feared, he respected God, trying his best to avoid any appearance of evil and not trusting in any other God. That's what it means. Never does it say that he did not sin. Never does it say that just because he tried his best to not fail and to fall into evil and always cried out to God, Never did it say that he would be spared. Before we get there, let's learn or let's refresh ourselves a little bit on what we do know about Job. You might say that Job had it all. Had it all. God had blessed him beyond belief with with a wonderful family and life and and money and and possessions and animals and then more of these things. And still every day, you know what he did? He repented. He knew that either he or his family, they were not perfect throughout the day, and so he sought God's forgiveness. And yet what happened to Job? Trouble still came. Even though Job had visibly done nothing wrong, trouble still came. Same holds true for you and me sometimes, right? Just because we we don't sometimes do anything visibly wrong, or just because we don't do what those people out there do, Does that mean that trouble won't come into our lives? No. Not all our trials spring from our personal wrongdoings. Sometimes even though we don't understand it, God uses trials in our lives for our good and his good. I mean, look at the book of Job. God allowed Satan to test him. God allowed Satan to test Job. When you start digging in, we're not going to go through all 42 chapters today like we did four of Jonah. But when you really start digging in there, you start off by seeing this conversation between Satan and the Lord. Satan's pretty confident in himself that that he is going to get Job to curse God. But God says, no, I don't think so. He 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 says, no, 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 wait. You're not going to do that because Job is blameless. He's upright, and and he could take, and you could take away all that he has, everything, and he will still not curse me. And Satan's like, well, give me the chance. And the Lord does. So off Satan goes with permission from God to take everything from Job, everything except his life. And he does exactly that. Job suffers. He suffers a lot. His possessions gone, his children deceased, his body stricken with painful sores. The blessings of God, all given by God to him, all taken away in an instant. Our human initial thought is exactly what Satan wanted. Job would have the right to curse God. How could he do that? How epically has Job failed to deserve any of this suffering? People suffer. Children suffer. Job suffered. Over the course of the next 30 chapters or so, Job rides this roller coaster of emotions. At one point, he does not sin with his lips, and then at the very next, in that moment, he curses the day of his birth. He has friends. He has friends who hear what, what he's gone through and what's happened to him, 
And, and they come and they, they join him in his grief. And, and these friends are, are great. They try to fix things for Job. They, they try to fix things for Job by kindly pointing out where he has epically failed. Eliphaz, okay? Eliphaz told Job he was suffering because he was getting what he deserved. Innocent and upright people do not suffer, Job. But those wicked ones, they have trouble. So you're just, you're just getting what you deserve. That's what it is. And then you have Bildad. Bildad blames Job's suffering on his children. Those darn kids of yours... They must have done something so wrong. They got what they deserve for their sins. And you're getting what you deserve. You were their father. If you would have done better. If you would have done more. So you best straighten up. Well, you're in the same way as them. And then another friend, Zophar, he just chimes in and he just plainly chill, tells Job, you're guilty, man, you're actually suffering less than you deserve. These friends all assume the same thing. We know what happens when you assume. They all believe that a relationship between God and the people is based on human effort and achievement. They believe that God is good, but that he does not accept sinners. No, they believe that God punishes sinners. They place blame on Job for things he has no control over. Like the way his adult children act. And behave. They blame Job and just tell him that he should have been a better person. And, and Job doesn't know what to think. He trusts and he believes in a God of, of love, but he, he feels like that's not what he always gets. He feels like he doesn't deserve what he is getting. He still holds out faith, though. He, he still hopes in a mediator, a, a man not like him, but someone who will stand between him and God. He believes in a redeemer who will stand upon the earth for him. Even though he may suffer immense pain, even though he may die, he proclaims a faith that says, no matter what happens to me, that he will see God with his own eyes. Fourth friend shows up. Elihu. Who? Elihu. We find him in chapter 32. This is the youngest friend of Job. You see, back in, 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 in the day and, and back in, in, in other cultures, if you were young, you did not speak until all the elders had spoken. So Elihu waited his turn. And he had something completely different to say than all those other friends. You see, Elihu believed that salvation not punishment is God's ultimate purpose in allowing suffering. Let's say that again. Elihu believed that salvation, not punishment, is God's ultimate purpose in allowing suffering. He is teaching Job that it is not for punishment, but for deliverance. 
that he's going through these things. Saying, allowing your affliction, allow your affliction, allow your pain, allow your suffering to open your ears to learn of the Lord's purposes. To see that he is constantly calling us back to him and to his love. Now this teaching is totally contrary to what anything else those other friends said. God does not repay for what one has done. God is not out to get anyone. That's what he's saying here, friends. God does not repay for what one has done. God is not out to get anyone. God redeems. God rescues. God loves. And after Elihu speaks here to Job, he finally gets what he's been waiting for. He gets an answer. Job gets an answer from God. Chapters 38 to 41. God speaks directly to Job. In grace, in undeserved love, the Lord came to Job to convict him of his rebellion and his lack of trust. And he did this by starting to fix Job's perspective. You see, what God did is God unfolded the created universe before Job. And as God is doing this, he's turning Job's eyes from inwardly focused to outwardly and upward towards God. And throughout this entire conversation, friends, with God, not once are people mentioned. Not once are people mentioned. God reminds Job of where the focus is to be. That God, the Lord, is the center of the universe. He is the central focus of all things. And we see God's response is not exactly what Job was expecting. Because God did not answer his questions of why God is there suffering. He did not answer the question of why the pain. Why am I going through this? Or why are they going through this? Instead, God answered with his own questions. Were you there? God never reveals the reasons behind Job's suffering. Never. But Job does respond. And his response is one of humility and one of confession. And I invite you into that last part of Job, Job chapter 42. Lily read this for us just a few moments ago. Job 42, verses 1 through 6. And what you have here is, is Job's response, which represents all of humanity's failure, past, present, and future. Okay? You have all of humanity's failure to, you have, it represents all of humanity's failure in trying to avoid the wages of sin. Okay? So we start off here with Job 42, verses 1 and 2. It says this Job answered the Lord and said, I know that you can do all things, and that no purpose of yours can be thwarted. Job is saying, God, you are God. You are the all-powerful, all-knowing God, and you can do all things, and no purpose of yours can be stopped. Ever. No purpose of yours can be stopped. Because you are God. And now, these next verses, you see that Job admits that he questioned the Lord out of his ignorance. He thought God was unfair according to human standards. Yet, in fact, the Lord was always acting according to his will, to his mysterious purposes. 
And so now Job speaks. But this time he speaks from the heart. Look at verse 3. You asked, who is this that questions my wisdom with such ignorance? It is I, and I was talking about things I knew nothing about, things too far wonderful for me. Job admits he was wrong. Anybody done that lately? His comments that he made had no legs to stand on. Were you there when I created the earth? Were you there, Job? He's in the wrong. He's sorry. He's sorry for trying to play God. And then you have these last few verses here, four through six. And, in the, and the first time I read these, it, it really just jumped off the page at me um, and in a new way kind of excited me. Uh, look at what this says. It says, verse, starting there with verse four. You said to me, listen and I will speak. I have some questions for you and you must answer them. And then Job responded with, I had only heard you before, but now I have seen you with my own eyes. I take back everything I said, and I sit in dust and ashes to sow my repentance. Here, at this moment, Job finally understands God. Truly, for who he is, for the very first time. You see, up until this point, it's only been head knowledge. It's only been theological training. It was only the Bible teaching that others told him about. But here, now, after seeing all this, after God responded to him, he now meets God. And meeting God is quite different from studying God. He finally sees God in his love and his mercy and his grace amidst everything he's gone through. And he repents. He doesn't just say, I'm sorry. What can my kids do? I'm sorry. But he truly repents. And here's the thing about true repentance. True repentance is never solely a human act. True repentance is never solely a human act, but something that happens to the individual when confronted by God, a change in the heart occurs. And you can't do this by yourself, right? This change is worked by the Spirit, by the Holy Spirit, and through the Word. And this is what affects Job's attitude and now his life. And he sees God for who he truly is. God never reveals the reason behind Job's suffering. Instead, God reveals himself. Through his suffering, he reveals his love, his mercy, his forgiveness, his grace. And for Job, it is enough. It's enough. Even though Satan has seemed to romp through Job's entire life with evil ways and done so many evil things, the Lord was still there, still holding on to Job. Through it all, Job saw God's majesty and goodness now in a fuller way. He was steadfast in his faith. And throughout this story, throughout his story, we learn over and over and over again that the Lord is compassionate and he's merciful as he carries out his purposes. So what about us? That's Job. Well, like Job, we try to fix things. Our friends try to help out. But sooner or later, we all end up frustrated by failure and surrounded by brokenness and hurt that we cannot fix. We cannot rely on reason. 
We can't believe that, we can't believe that the lie out there that our suffering is punishment for, for our wrongdoings. And, and friends, while God never reveals the reason behind our suffering, because he won't. While God never reveals the reasons behind our suffering, our pain, or our loss, he reveals to us every single day our hope. We're just a few days away now from Ash Wednesday, where we as Christians, as believers in Jesus, begin this this Lenten season preparing for God's ultimate rescue plan to reach its pinnacle. His love, his mercy, his grace, his forgiveness. We see God's face here, nailed to a tree. And laid in a tomb to be broken of three days later. Where he frees us from suffering. All suffering from the pain and the hurt and the failures of this world. So we don't have to endure them forever. There lies our answer. There is where we see Jesus, our only hope, our only strength, our only answer for everything we're enduring. For friends, as long as we are in this sinful world, as long as we live in this sin-filled world, we will struggle. We will hurt. We will suffer. But through it all, Like Job, we can take heart and hold on to the truth that the Lord is ever serving us. The Lord is ever granting us repentance. And that we, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we can be repentant and restored. We just got to get like a little bit more like Job to have our eyes opened once again. Our hearts truly opened to see what God has done and how we've been restored in full. We've got to go from the manger to the cross to the empty tomb to see that there our Redeemer connects us once again to God. There our sins have been forgiven. And there, again, for the sake of Christ, he's rescued us from suffering and given us new life. Through Jesus, you could taste and see that the Lord is good. Through Jesus, we can hear God speak to our troubled hearts and minds. Yes, here on earth you will have many failures. Yes, here on earth you will have trials and sorrows and suffering. But take heart. Jesus says, take heart because I have overcome world. From God, through Jesus, right to you today. And through you later today and this week and this year, you could say with Jacob and Jonah and Job, amidst all the epic fails of this life, I know that my Redeemer lives. And in the last, he will stand upon the earth. And after my skin has been thus destroyed, yet in my flesh I shall see God, whom I shall see for myself. And my eyes shall behold him and not another. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. And now may the peace that pass all understanding keep our hearts and minds amidst all the pain and suffering focused on our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I invite you to stand, friends, and join me now as we make confession of the Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. 
The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body. I invite you to join me now as we go to our Lord in the time of prayer. If you're visiting us and haven't visited us in a while, uh, prayers may be a little bit different now um, as we give you, um, brothers and sisters in Christ, the opportunity to pray to our, our God this day as well out loud. Join me in prayer. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, We live in a world where daily we see suffering and more suffering. And we place this world into your hands. And we know that the suffering will never go away. The pain and the hurt, the grief and the loss will always be there. But Father, we pray that you move into our hearts a deeper understanding of your love in Jesus Christ for us. That he has rescued us from all the struggles and hurts of this world. And no matter what we face or our loved ones face, we can find confidence in you. Knowing that you as our Redeemer live. And you rescue us and give us new life with you. Father, there are hurting people and grieving people all over this nation and this world we continue to lift up all those affected by that horrific earthquake over in Turkey and Syria where now over 40,000 plus have been killed. Immense amounts of pain and grief, Lord, and so many of those people are lost and they don't know you. They don't know your love. So we pray that you send your Holy Spirit upon that place that many more may come to know you and those that do know you, Lord, that you use them as your hands and feet, that they extend care and love mercy and grace, not only through words, but through their actions and deeds. But Father, we don't have to go super far to see people hurting. So this day, Lord, we give to you all those who are struggling in body, mind, or soul. We lay at your feet Sam and Melissa, Susan and Diana, Jenny and Joyce, Kathy and Timothy, Gino, Dave, and Christina, Audrey, Tammy, George, and William. Father, we give you Paul and Pam, Al and Lee and Ryan. We give to you Lois and Darlene, Devin and Lisa, Cheryl and Chris, Bob and Sharon, Dolores, Robin, Betty, Landon, Ron, and Susan. Lord, you know where each of these children are. We pray that you put your hand of healing upon them and restore them to full strength and full health. But amidst this time of trial and tribulation and suffering, as we pray for full and complete health for them, we pray for their hearts, Lord, that they may be reminded of who you are amidst what they're going through. And that you also remind their families and their loved ones of who you are and that you walk with each of them through this most difficult time. Father, be with our nation, as we know there is wars and rumors of wars always happening. We ask that you guide our hearts and our minds to trust in you, to give you all our worries, our concerns, our anxieties, and we ask that you bless those who are in authority over us that you have placed there, and that you would use them to keep a good order among the things um, in our lives every day, Lord. Protect these, your children, who are gathered here this day. Equip them, train them, and send them out, carrying forth your name and your love with them wherever they may go. And Father, whatever else is upon our heart, these, your children, speak them to you this day. God, we pray right now for all those who are maybe in transition, 
who are trying to figure out what next steps are in their lives, trying to find their purpose and searching in all kinds of places. We pray that you bring clarity to where you're leading them, that they would listen for your voice and that they would seek you in your word and that you would show them what you would have them do with the gifts you've given them. And Father, we thank you for the many opportunities you give us daily to serve and to testify about your love. Open our eyes so that we see clearly what it is and give us the courage and the love and the compassion to act on those opportunities. Lord, thank you for all of the people you have blessed us with in this congregation and all of those people who, who lead in so many different ways, whether it's the different boards that we have in the church, the shepherd leaders, um, Monica and Beth and Chad and Pastor, all of those people who share their talents with singing and with music. Um, Lord, just thank you so much for blessing them with those gifts and just continued prayers for each and every one of them as they continue on the mission to, to serve you and to serve others, Lord. Lord, thank you for clean, air, water, flow, as those who are suffering from the effects of the train development in the East Palestine. Father, I lift our auction and dinner to you tonight that um, the funds that are raised will go a long way to um, helping spread your word in Costa Rica. So now, Lord, whatever else is upon our heart, and we don't know what to say, we thank you that you gave us your Son, Jesus Christ, who himself has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, who governs all things in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the prayers of your people, and grant us your peace through all our days. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Friends, now receive this blessing from our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. I invite you to remain standing for our closing hymn. Crown him with many crowns.
going to have a seat. Just a couple quick announcements for you, and then we will get you out um, into the day. First off, um, we do have Ash Wednesday kicking off this week, um, 1 o'clock and 6.30 services. The chili cook-off is also supposed to be happening this week. If you've been watching the weather, there is potential for um, a massive winter storm, anywhere from 8 to 28 inches of snow, it looks like, um, right now. Um, so with that being said, um, there will be church. You may not all be able to get here, but I will be able to get here. We'll have somebody here to video. There will be church um, on Wednesday night. Uh, just be watching for an email that the chili cook-off may be pushed back um, a week um, so we don't make all you come out and eat all that amazing chili and put you at risk. Um, but we will have the 6.30 service um, for you no matter what happens um, that day with snow. And maybe we'll get two inches, which will be great. Um, but just be watching for that. Um, our auction is uh, tonight, um, and our meal. We're super excited about this. Our meal tickets are all gone, but you can still come and join us for the auction. So the meal is from 5 to 6. Our live auction and silent auction start tonight at 6 o'clock. So we'd love to have you join us if you for a meal. Uh, come down here. You'll be going downstairs to eat. Everything auction-wise will be upstairs. Uh, but if you didn't buy meal tickets, we'd love to have you join us for the, the live auction starting at 6 o'clock tonight. Again, all those funds go to su uh, support our brothers and sisters um, in, in Costa Rica. Um, yes, Monica. Okay, good. So here we go. This is a good segue. Um, so you can bring cash, check, or you can pay with um, credit cards. I'm going to invite Beth up here. For those of you who don't know Beth, Beth is our business administrator, and she's got some exciting news, not only about Script Bean having a new name, but something oh, yeah. more exciting than that. Go ahead. Okay, so super exciting. We are getting a whole new program to handle our memberships, our finances, our payroll. It's all going to be on one. Um, what's also exciting is the online giving is going to be so much easier. It's all in one program. Um, and you'll get an app on your phone that you can just like go on and text to give. You can look at all, everything you've given over the year and um, see that. Choose funds that you want to give to. You can also check in at church now. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have to fill out a card. You can just say, I'm here. We're, we're getting there. We're getting there. Um, so, yes, one of the things tonight that will be nice that we're going to go ahead and jump into the program with is um, you'll be able to, with your phone, scan a QR code, and it'll pull up, and you'll be able to choose to pay with debit, credit, um, ACH, or Google Pay. Um, so it's a really great option that we're able to have. But with that, anyone who is doing online giving now, this week you, at some point, will get an email um, that'll say it's from LMC, and it's going to be, because I'm going to be moving everything from Vanco over this week, and as soon as I move your online giving over, it's going to send you an email to ask you to approve. Um, so please watch your emails and approve it, please. <laughs> um, so, because as soon as you approve it, um, within the next two weeks, then I'm going to be closing down Vanco. So watch for your emails. Um, exciting news. And script is now raised right. Uh, right. Script is now raised right. So we're going to try and slowly ch start changing that over. With that, we do have a big Quick Trip promotion going on. Um, Quick Trip is in the process of changing their cards to gas only or grocery only. Um, right now, with the grocery only, we actually get 20%. And I don't know where Chad is. I think the gas is 10 right now. But, um, yeah, they're switching it all over. So, But we all love to buy groceries at Quick Trip, so... That's right. Thank you, Beth. So yes, lots happening, so watch for more information with that. If you do have any questions, please talk to Beth in the next week or so. Uh, there'll be more information coming out that um, in our announcements just to keep everybody up to date. Uh, we are excited about that. It's making life so much easier um, within the, that front office there um, in, in so many different ways. Uh, I think that's it. So once again, thank you to our servants up top and down below. For without you guys, this all would not be possible. God's richest blessings, friends, as you step out like Jacob and Jonah and Job, um, knowing that no matter how epic our fails are, the Lord has redeemed us through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. God's blessings, friends. We'll see you soon.